indelible, 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 indel, no, indelible. Yes. Hey everyone, welcome to Bourbon Bites. My name is Clifton and today we're reviewing the latest Foursquare release, Indelible. So this is Mark 18 in the Exceptional Cask series. I did a stream last year, uh, it's fun to say that now, uh, where I reviewed several different releases from this series. Um, check out that up there. I tried a whole lineup from them, including uh, Reduta Bleu, as I pronounced it, um, which is redoubtable, uh, my favorite Foursquare release to date. Um, but this is the one that just came out end of 2021. It is a 11 year old single blended rum. It used X bourbon and X Zinfandel cask, which is really interesting. I have not had a Zinfandel finished anything. <laughs> I paid $75 for this, which is relatively low for a four square rum. It is 11 years compared to some of the older releases that I've reviewed um, on previous videos. But as a fan of four square, I had to pick this up and give you guys a review to let you know if this is any good or not. And yes, I am mostly a whiskey channel, um, but if it wasn't for whiskey, I think rum is my second favorite category. So I've had some experience with different ones. Like I said, I've done a bunch of different videos on rum. I'll put a playlist, actually. I don't have a rum pay playlist, but I'll go ahead and put one together. So I'll link to it at the end of this video if you wanna see more rum reviews. And make sure to let me know in the comments below if you do wanna see more of these. So here's a look at the label. Um, like I said, 11 years, X bourbon, X Zinfandel. This is only 96 proof, which is relatively low for these four square releases. I know a few others have been kind of in that range. They haven't been my favorite, um, but we'll see if this one maybe changes my mind about the lower proof four square releases. Oh yeah, on the nose, this gives me a note that I, I've had on other four square releases, but not as pronounced. This is straight up toasted coconut. It's got some candy sweetness as well, which is you know typical of rum, but yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten this much coconut on anything other than like Malibu. <laughs> it does have a little bit of fruitiness there, maybe some citrus, I'm getting kind of like a lemon peel kind of note, maybe a little bit of orange as well, but it's really rich and complex for the nose with being that low proof. So I'm very excited by the nose of this, but I'm even more excited to give it a try. So cheers. Okay, so I was really worried that I was gonna be, you know, not necessarily let down by the proof, but y'all know I love those higher proof releases with whiskey and rum. This though, the proof doesn't make it overwhelming. You don't have to search very hard to find these flavors that I'm that I'm getting on it, which is nice. It's very approachable, but it does have a bit of a viscous mouthfeel. It kind of drinks like a higher proof whiskey or rum in this case. <laughs> Flavor wise, it's not too different from what I was getting on the nose. Still that toasty coconut is the most dominant note. And it's a note that I didn't think I liked until I had it on this rum. It's not the taste of it that I don't like. It's more of the texture. So with this, I'm getting the flavor of that toasty coconut, but in a delicious uh, rum instead. It still has some fruitiness, but I'm not getting as much like zestiness as I was getting on the nose. To me, this is almost like a, um, man, do I want to say like banana, but not like, you know, fake banana. This is like an actual banana that's gone a little bit ripe, um, but it's on the very, very back end of the palate and it's very subdued compared to the, the coconut, but it actually pairs nicely with it. It kind of has a little bit of like a, like a cola aspect to it. Not that I recommend, you know, <laughs> mixing a $75 rum with Coke, but it has some of those like, you know, those like kicks, like a fresh glass of Coca-Cola gives you. And maybe that's the spice that I was getting on it. It has like a little bit of like a, like a kind of like a kind of feeling like of carbonation in the back of your throat. You know, when you drink a nice sip of Coke, you have a little bit of like tingles at the back of your tongue. I'm getting a little bit of, a bit of that on this one. And finish wise, I think it's sufficiently long for the proof. I mean, I wasn't expecting the finish to kind of linger that way, but it's doing it in a really nice way. And I don't miss the higher proof at all when I'm drinking this rum. If you are just getting started with Foursquare and you know, the, you're know you turned off a bit by the higher proof releases, this one is under 100 proof, still packs a punch with flavor in a way that I feel like Foursquare is known for. And it's what makes them stand out as a rum uh, distillery. And for 75 bucks, I mean, I think it's a great entry level um, into the premium line from Foursquare. Now, if that's a little bit much for your budget, I also did a stream of um, Dorley's rum, which is distilled at Foursquare. It's a very affordable budget line from them. It's sold at Total Wine. So if you missed that, I'll also link to it up here. That was so interesting to try Foursquare at a lower price point. Yes, lower proof um, and definitely not as complex, but it, it surprised me how much just good stuff the distillery is making. So that would be your entry level if you're you know budget conscious, but if you're looking for an entry level into premium products from Foursquare, this is a great one. Is it my favorite expression from the Exceptional Cast series? No, I still think I gravitate towards those higher proof ones. I know the stream that I mentioned earlier, some of the lower proof ones weren't really doing it for me and some of the wine casts weren't quite 
you know, exciting me. Speaking of which, I don't actually know how much the ex Zinfandel cask impacted the flavor here. I mean, maybe it's giving that toasted coconut note. If so, that's awesome. Or potentially it's what's giving that kind of effervescence, that like cola note. Um, but either way, it, it doesn't hurt the cask or the rum at all. If you're looking for a more exciting cask finish, you know, stick with the, you know, Madeira, the other sherries, things like that. They do have a bit more of an impact on the flavor, but this one, if anything, it, it rounds it out as a delicious rum. So Four Square Indelible is a winner in my book. This is a great rum, especially if you're into more premium products. It doesn't, you know, kill you proof wise and it doesn't break the bank as well. So it's a win-win in my book. So if you guys have tried this, let me know what you think of it. I have not seen very many reviews of it. There's a couple of, you know, Reddit posts and things like that, but I'm not seeing any other videos on this. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you've tried this, I'd love to hear, you know, if you think it's a good one, if you think it's, you know, your favorite, least favorite of the exceptional cask line, but also let me know if you want to see more rum reviews. Cause like I said, it's rum is second to whiskey um, in terms of what I really enjoy. So I enjoy drinking it. So let me know if y'all enjoy watching me drink it. <laughs> But until next time, this has been Bourbon Bites. Cheers, and I'll see you next video.